Congratulations on your new baby. Here's a gift of three thousand four hundred dollars. What? I can't accept that much. It's okay. It's a gift from me. Thanks, mom. This really helps. Although we were expressing our gratitude, I felt something was off the moment I held the envelope. When I checked inside, there was no money, but something else. I was so mad, I threw the envelope into the trash can. Hey, what are you doing? That's the money Mom gave us. Apologize to her right now. Unaware of what was inside, my husband Ralph scolded me. Would you say the same thing after seeing this? I showed him the contents of the envelope. He trembled and clenched his fists. Mom, don't mock us like this anymore. My name is Brooke. I'm thirty years old, and an office worker. Ralph and I have been married for two years. We met at a mixer. He was handsome, and I was immediately attracted to him. He seemed interested in me too, and we started dating. He was kind and had a wonderful smile. I was so happy to be with him. Being together always felt relaxing. Our relationship smoothly progressed, and we started living together after a year. We began seriously considering marriage. A year after moving in together, he proposed, and we decided to get married. I had wanted to marry him too, so I was overjoyed when he proposed. We quickly went to greet each other's parents. My parents really liked him. Well, he's very nice and works at a big company, so. He made a good impression on them. I was relieved my parents approved of our marriage. Next, we went to his parents' house. I was nervous on the way there. When we arrived, his parents welcomed us. Hello, you must be Brooke. Yes, nice to meet you. Thank you for having me today. No need to be so formal. We're happy to welcome you. My father-in-law Mark said this. With a kind smile, he's just like Ralph. I thought, Ralph's kindness probably comes from him. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law Paulina stood straight, watching me intently. I felt intimidated by her presence. It's typical for mothers-in-law to be strict, I guess. I made sure to be polite. Mark kindly asked various questions, which made it easier for me to talk. But Paulina remained quiet. After we finished our marriage greetings, Ralph and I felt exhausted on the way back. That was stressful. Ralph, your mom is kind of scary. Really? She's usually nice. No, she was pretty intimidating, stern and silent. True, she was quieter than usual, but she's basically kind. So don't worry. If you say so, I was relieved to hear him say that. Both our families met without major issues, and our wedding went well. Many friends and colleagues attended, making it a memorable event. After our honeymoon, we started our life as a married couple. Living together before marriage meant our lifestyle didn't change much, but being newlyweds still felt new. We both worked, so we shared household chores. Ralph, having lived alone for a while, was good at cooking. We would prepare make-ahead dishes together, and whoever came home first would cook the main dish. We lived happily, adapting flexibly to each other's needs. Our rules for living together remained the same, and I was happy we could live blissfully in our own way. I thought our life would continue like this, gradually adding more happiness, like. Having children and buying a house. However, something big happened two years into our marriage. What? Dad's in the hospital. It started with a sudden phone call. Mark had suffered a stroke and was hospitalized. Ralph and I rushed to the hospital. Dad, are you okay? Ah,、oh, thanks for coming. You do. Sorry to worry you. I need to be hospitalized for a while for some tests. I see. Mark, 
let us know if there's anything we can help with. Thanks. That's sweet of you to say. After chatting in his room, we left. I'm worried about your dad. Yeah, me too. Let's visit him as much as we can. Thanks, Brooke. That means a lot. We visited him between work. The test results revealed he had cancer, with only about a year left to live. We were speechless at the sudden announcement. No, he can't be. Both of us, and especially Paulina, were deeply shocked. And of course, Mark himself must have been devastated. None of us could accept this unexpected turn of events. But we couldn't stay down forever. We had to cherish the remaining days with him. My husband and I decided to visit him every chance we got. He always seemed so happy to see us. We had a good time in his hospital room, listening to his stories. But after about six months, he reached the end of his life and passed away. We were prepared for it, but losing a loved one is still incredibly painful. We couldn't hold back our tears. We managed to arrange the funeral, but we cried throughout the ceremony. Mark was a well-respected man, and many people attended his funeral to pay their respects. Everyone was crying. I don't think anyone was there out of obligation. After the funeral, we were able to send him off properly. Gradually, my husband and I started to regain our strength and return to normal life. One day, Paulina contacted my husband. She wanted to talk and asked us to make time for her. So, on our day off, we went to her house. Mom, what's going on? Thank you for coming. I have a little favor to ask. Since your father passed away, I've been living alone, right? But I feel so anxious. What if I fall ill here and die without anyone noticing? And the loneliness of being alone. So I was thinking, Ralph, could you move in and live together? Live together? To our surprise, she wanted to move in with us. Both my husband and I were taken aback by the sudden suggestion. She seemed very distressed. We asked for some time to think about it, and discussed it when we got home. Your mom seemed really desperate, didn't she? Yeah, she did. I'm okay with us moving in with her. Really? Yeah, it's close enough to work, and seeing how anxious and lonely she is, I can't help but worry. Thanks, Brooke. Mom will definitely be happy. Then, he contacted her to agree to us moving in. She seemed very pleased, which made me happy too. We then cancelled our apartment lease and moved into her house. Mom, looking forward to living with you. Me too, sweetheart. At first, living together went relatively well. Having lost her husband, she seemed happy just to have people around. So she was initially kind to me. Thank you, Brooke, for helping with the household chores. It's really helpful to have you here. Not at all, I'm happy to be of help. She would express her gratitude to me like that. But about three months after we started living together, her attitude began to change. Hey, Brooke, when are you going to quit your job? What? I don't plan to quit my job. What? A wife should be at home supporting her husband. It's ridiculous for you to keep working. Have some shame. But I was shaken by this sudden change in her behavior. As she regained her strength, she started treating me terribly. A woman obsessed with her job. Not sure about that. Don't you realize that by not being a housewife, 
you're increasing my burden? I'm sorry. I appreciate that you take the initiative with the household chores. All I could do was apologize. But her harsh treatment continued. When will I see my grandchild? Are you not having kids because you're working? That's something my husband and I are discussing. She was right. We've been saying we want to focus on our careers for now. See, it's people like you who contribute to the declining birth rate. You should be pumping out babies left and right. Why does she have to say it like that? It seemed like she just wanted to blame me, and nothing I said mattered. She always picked times when my husband wasn't around to harass me. She was really mean, and I started to despise her. My husband was increasingly busy with work trips and overtime, so we rarely had time to talk. My mother-in-law took advantage of this and spread rumors about me to the relatives, who believed her since they had known her longer. The relatives sided with her, and they would say things like, You shouldn't give your mother-in-law such a hard time. Is it that young people today are so self-centered? Paulina appeared delighted to have everyone on her side. I'm so glad you all support me. I just wish she'd realize her duties as a wife. I found these gatherings unbearable. Another source of distress was my sister-in-law, Maribel. She lived alone and worked as a freelancer, only showing up at family gatherings. She avoided coming home when Ralph was around, as they weren't close. She joined her mother in bullying me. She's so delusional, still not quitting her job even though mom told her to. She's the worst. How selfish can she be? I thought it was odd that Maribel, at 28, was still freelancing and not settling down, but I had no allies here. All I could do was endure it. During this time, I suddenly fell ill and went to the hospital. I found out I was pregnant. We're pregnant? That's awesome. Ralph was thrilled to hear the news. I'll work even harder. Let's build a happy family. Yes, let's do that. Even though living with my mother-in-law might be challenging, she seemed happy about my pregnancy. It's about time. But good job. Thank you. I thought maybe she'd be kinder to me now. But I was naive to think that. Hey, Brooke, why are you just lounging around when you're not working? I'm sorry. I've been feeling really sick with morning sickness. Not my problem. Just do the housework. Laundry, cleaning, and make lunch too. She was harsh, not caring about my condition. But I had to protect my baby and myself, so I didn't do the housework as she demanded, though I did what I could within my limits. She was furious with my attitude and kept berating me. I decided to talk to my husband about going back to my parents' house for the birth. He respected my decision, saying it was best if I thought so. Paulina opposed, but I insisted and went back to my parents' house for the birth. Life there was truly comfortable, and I realized how much stress I had been under from my mother-in-law. Months passed and I gave birth to a healthy baby girl. Ralph was so moved, he cried with joy. Holding my daughter, I felt emotional and excited about our future life together. However, I felt uneasy when I heard Paulina muttering, A girl, huh? After a few days in the hospital, I returned to Paulina's house. My husband took a day off to pick me up. When we arrived, my smiling mother-in-law approached me, and said, Congratulations on your new baby. Thank you. Here is a gift of $3,400. She handed me an envelope. What? I can't accept that much. We were shocked. Even if it was a gift, we couldn't accept that much. Ralph also declined, but she insisted. It's okay. It's a gift from me. I felt compelled to accept. Thanks, Mom. This really helps. Thank you so much, Paulina. 
As we were expressing our gratitude, I felt something was off with the envelope when I held it in my hand. It felt too light. She was busy playing with our daughter. I felt something was off and took the chance to open the envelope. Inside, instead of money, there were other things. I was so angry that I threw the envelope into the trash can. Hey, what are you doing? That was the money mom gave us. He was shocked and looked at me, scolding me. Apologize to her right now. He was angry, not knowing what was inside. Would you say the same thing after seeing this? I showed him what was inside the envelope. It was a bundle of receipts from a recent trip she took with my sister-in-law. They bought various things like souvenirs and brand items. The envelope also included hotel bills. It seemed like she was asking us to reimburse her for these expenses. Oopsie! It seems I made a mistake. I meant to give you a birth gift, but I handed you the travel receipts instead. But you know, I had a lot of extra work while you were away for your birth, so I'd like you to cover these. She said this and laughed. I was just amazed at how hopeless she was. Ralph, trembling with anger and clenching his fists, said, Mom, don't mock us like this anymore. What do you mean, anymore? I know you've been bullying Brooke. What are you talking about? Me bullying Brooke? There's no proof of that. I've been busy with work and couldn't be there for her as much as I wanted, but I sensed she was troubled. But she always says she was fine when I asked, so I decided to install a hidden camera. What? The footage showed you bullying her several times. I collected it as evidence and agreed to let Brooke go back to her parents to prevent further harm. When she returned, I planned to leave the house with her and our daughter. What? You're kidding, right? No, I'm not. Brooke is more important to me than you. Now that we have a daughter, I can't take care of you anymore. Maribel is there, so I'm sure you'll be fine without me. Don't say that. I apologize for being harsh to Brooke. She was panicking. Please, forgive me, Brooke. I'm really sorry. She apologized to me, but I couldn't forgive her anymore. I can't trust you anymore, so you don't need to apologize. I'll use the evidence your son collected to sue you for the emotional distress you've caused. What? Please, tell me you're joking. No, I'm serious. You pushed me to my limit. She slumped in defeat. My husband and I packed our belongings, left the house with our daughter, and put our stuff temporarily at my parents' house. We then rented a new place and moved in, cutting off all contact with my mother-in-law and making sure she didn't know where we were. We sent a formal notice and sued her for damages. When Maribel called my husband, furious, he told her she would also be sued, and she went silent. We stopped attending family gatherings. However, a kind relative who had always been nice to me secretly contacted me and told me that my mother-in-law and sister-in-law, faced with the lawsuit, were now asking relatives for money. The relatives quickly distanced themselves from them. The two, known for their wasteful habits, had quickly squandered my father-in-law's inheritance and were now trapped in a cycle of debt and overspending. They were desperately working part-time jobs to repay their debts, but their spending habits only increased their debts. Serves them right. In contrast, my husband and I were happily living together, watching our daughter grow. From now on, I'm going to talk to my husband immediately if something comes up and make sure we face problems together as a couple. <laughs>